Joy, my name is Xavier Brown from Washington, D.C. So good week for me. I uh, wake up at 5.30, get ready for work, breakfast, go to my job, hit the gym, boom, do my job stuff, some other stuff in between, uh, get off. And I'm either going to um, a d- different community garden or I'm doing some homework. Or, yeah, it's my days are like long. I'm going to go to a meeting after work. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's always, it's, every day is different, but it always starts at like around 5, 5.30 in the morning. So right now we're at Project Eden. This is in Southeast. It's part of a church. <coughs> Eden breaks down to everyone deserves to eat naturally, like from the Bible. Um, so this is one. Uh, There's another one where I help help out or I help, um, help to manage over in Northeast. 50, 53rd and Dick Street Northeast over in Clay Terrace. Um, that's, that's an emerging garden. There's another one that's going to take, or that's actually happening right now in Benning Terrace in Southeast. Um, and then we have another one. This every Wednesday I'm over there. This Woodland Terrace in Southeast. And so last year um, we constructed a raised bed that spelled out the word love, and we're planting in there. And so some of these vegetables that you see right here, some of those will go over there. Probably some of the sage and the strawberry will definitely go over there. Communities that have so much going on, um, and I thought that. Uh, a good way to engage the, the youth, engage the families, and something that's uh, universal and I think will forever be universal is, is the idea of food, you know, and just connecting people back to the land and using it as a platform. It's like a healthy outlet for kids. In, in a lot of neighborhoods, kids don't have things to do, like safe things to do. So, mm-hmm. like, as an outlet for the kids. Um, my father, like five years ago, told me to take this DC Master Gardening class. Um, and I got into it because it, when I was in the class, it wasn't really that many black people into it, you know. And so, kind of, I guess, kind of piqued my interest. And I was like, damn, I want to learn more about it. Then I started meeting people like Zachary and Gail. I started to meet other black farmers, other people up and down the East Coast. And I was like, man. And the plants and stuff just started talking to me, you know. I felt connected to the plants. So I, it found me, like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't find it. Community garden is, is a good tool. Um, to organize people in different communities, right? Um, a lot of the community gardens have become central uh, community hubs, man, where people can gather, people can discuss every all different types of things. So we can't, you know, also talk about health and wellness, but we can talk about, like, uh, gentrification. We can talk about jobs. You know, it's just a, a tool to pull people together. And also connecting people just back to the land and to the environment. I think there's healing factors um, on so many different emotional levels, spiritual levels, physical levels. So, like, the main things that... I started to do in a lot of community gardens where I work, it's Earth Urban Ag in general, is to incorporate the uh, seven principles of Kwanzaa and intertwine them with the garden as a way to build community, uh, build support around the garden, um, and to kind of take bring a different approach to the garden. So make it make it centered around the people in the community that that that, that interact with the garden space to bring people together. So I think um, principles of Kwanzaa are, are African American. The Kwan's the African American holiday, but the principles are universal principles that anybody can utilize, right? And so um, I'm really trying to like push, push that forward and apply these principles every day. Do some good things, some holistic stuff from a different approach. Uh, using food a- as the medium. This past Wednesday, uh, we were out there uh, in, in, in Woodland, and it was so many, <coughs> so many youth that just like in those in those, most of those neighborhoods, you don't even really have to promote that much you know what I'm saying people see you out there the youth see you out there they'll come how can I help how can I what can I do I want to I want to do this because I, I feel like the, the the once is there you know what I'm saying it has to be people out there that's supplying what they need but people want to do good stuff they want to do positive stuff you know um, and another thing that we're just trying to do is just sh- put a positive light on these communities too because whenever you hear it in the news if you're coming from somewhere else and you google it all your hair is such and such happened, this happened, or that happened. But yeah. you don't know, it's real people here living here, grandmothers, fathers that are doing good stuff. You know, 99.9% of people are, are doing great stuff. So, response is always good. The way we do it, and I, um, it kind of goes back to the principles of Kwanzaa, is, is our stuff is, is centered with the community first, you know? So, if it's, if it's something that, like, the community is not interested in, we don't do it. So, it's right. all based on the people. And so, I think it's kind of like, the opposite of gentrification, right? Because gentrification isn't community-centered at all, you know what I'm saying? Ours is like community-centered in how can the people have a say in what they see in the community, right? And so now, like, once somebody, you construct a garden, they're like, well, hey, 
maybe we can do something with this space over here how can we turn this space over here into a community space you know how can we do this over here you know so um yeah i, I consider like what i do is like the opposite of you um people need to get organized i think and more more aware and more conscious of just like their own individual power i think in a lot of communities people kind of kind of been beat down so much that they they they've <coughs> start to forget that they have power right as you go to other more affluent neighborhoods like they're on the council if something they don't like something they're on the council and they're pressing them out they'll call they'll email you to death until like you get what they want and so i think um you need to get more organized and really you know hold people accountable and um and also figure out ways to kind of of course you have to wait for dc government but do for self as well you gotta you know if, we, if we're waiting for dc government i think it's gonna be a long wait because just the government works slow naturally you know it's, it's not designed to be something that moves fast it moves slow and so we have to figure out a way like you know how can we have our own self-determination which is one of the, the principles of quantum so how can we define like what we want to see and how can we put this stuff into action you know, so i think that's important too if you sit around and wait man you'll be would have been gotten moved out of here you know what i'm saying if you're gonna mm -hmm. wait for the government so we have to figure out like our own um ways to you know do our own stuff donate supplies donate your time um, donate your energy you know like stuff that you're doing it's always like of course like pictures and like like you gotta get the word out today who knows i don't know who you know in your network but you know people in your network right and he knows people in his network and, and so that just like shares it so like you can just tell one person that one person is gonna tell another person so just like sharing it coming out and volunteering um bringing your creativity uh, man in five years <coughs> um Communities I work in, uh, they would be, um, they would still be around. Shoot, I think that's one. Hopefully, they would still, they would still exist in five years. But also, they would, they would be um, on par with a lot of the other areas in, in the city as far as like amenities and opportunities. You know, um, there would be, uh, yeah, I, I would say those two things right there. You know, I think if there was more opportunities and amenities, a lot of other things would change. You know what I'm saying?